This video gives a practical demonstration of white blood cell labelling with Technetium 99M HMPAO. The process is broken down into several steps. The first is the removal of the red blood cells, and then there's the removal of the platelets from the white blood cells. And then the white blood cells are labelled before they're washed and prepared for injection. This schematic shows the steps involved in separating out the white blood cells from the rest of the blood. And once the white cells have been separated, they can be radiolabeled with the Technetium 99M HMPAO. The first step involves the separation of the red blood cells from the rest of the blood. Sometimes the red blood cells don't settle down very well and so you need to add a sedimentation agent. Some departments add sedimentation agent as standard and others only if the blood doesn't settle down properly. Here we see the technician drawing up the sedimentation agent and putting it into the falcon tube which is inside the radio pharmacy isolator. The whole blood is then added to the sedimentation agent. The blood will have been collected earlier in the nuclear medicine department and contains acid citric dextrose as an anticoagulant. You may have noticed that the technician saved some of the blood. This is so that they can get cell-free plasma that doesn't contain the sedimentation agent to add to the blood in the very final step. This blood that's been collected now is then spun at a high speed to sediment out both the red blood cells and the platelets to obtain the cell-free plasma. You can see the technician just checking the uh, volume is the same in the balance tube as it is in the tube with the blood in before they put it into the centrifuge to spin at high speed for about 10 minutes. The centrifuge in this isolator is operated from the outside and the technician is just adjusting the time and the speed. After the cells have been centrifuged for about 10 minutes, the cell-free plasma can be removed and kept for later. You'll notice that throughout these procedures, the technician uses a quill to draw up the blood cells. Uh, this is to prevent damage to the blood cells, which might occur if you use a narrow gauge needle, but also to prevent needle stick injury.
This whole process that we're seeing now is just to obtain cell-free plasma that doesn't contain the sedimentation agent that can then be mixed with the labelled cells at the very end of the process. The rest of the blood is just allowed to sediment under gravity. It takes about 45 minutes. If necessary, the blood can be spun at a very slow speed to sediment the red blood cells. This is a time lapse of the red cells sedimenting out. And you can see gradually as the red cells move down, the leukocyte rich, platelet rich plasma appears as the uh, supernatant on top. The leukocyte rich platelet rich plasma here is a little redder than I would expect. It may be that some of the red cells have lies for some reason, maybe due to the patient's condition, and that sometimes happens. So next, the technician will need to remove the leukocyte-rich, platelet-rich plasma from the red blood cells. white blood cells are then obtained by centrifuging that leukocyte rich platelet rich plasma for 5 minutes at 150 G. Again you can see the check technician just checking that the balance tube contains an equal volume to the blood so that they balance in the centrifuge. So now the technician is just removing the platelet rich plasma and they're going to leave the cell pellet at the bottom. The technician will just leave that cell pellet in maybe like half a mil of the plasma. Um, the don't, cells don't really like to be too dry and the labelling works fine with just a small amount of plasma present. The platelet-rich plasma that's been removed there will now be spun at high speed to sediment out the platelets to leave cell-free plasma and that's actually used to wash the cells and to stop the radio labelling reaction at the end of the incubation period. Now we're going to look at the radio labelling part. The Technetium 99M HMPAO is made freshly prepared um, and you'll see that in the next step. Then it's added to the white blood cells and left to incubate for 10 minutes. So here we see the technician drawing up the sodium potentitate to add to the Serotec kit.
here we see the technician getting the Ceratec kit ready and then adding the sodium protectate that they've just drawn up into that kit. The technician dilutes the Ceratec kit with some saline just to get the right concentration. And now we're going to see the technician adding the freshly prepared Ceratec to the pellet of white blood cells. The technician is just drawing up the Ceratec from the vial into a syringe and then they'll add it to the cells. After the Ceratec has been added to the cells, it's left to incubate for about 10 minutes, during which time the Technetium 99M HMPAO is taken up by the cells. At the end of the radio labelling stage, the cells are then washed with cell-free plasma and then they're centrifuged again at 150G for 5 minutes to obtain the cell pellet again and then the wash as a supernatant. Here we see the technician removing the supernatant from the washed cells and they're going to put that in a separate tube and they will count then the activity in that wash and the activity in the cell pellet in order to work out the radio labelling efficiency. see the technician counting the activity in the cells now and you can see that the radio labeling efficiency is a little over 50% which I guess is, is fairly typical. The technician will now add some of the cell-free plasma that doesn't contain the sed sedimentation agent to the cells, resuspend the cells in that um, cell-free plasma and then draw up the uh, radio labeled cells into a syringe ready for injection. Here you see the technician's got the selfie plasma in, in the syringe and then they'll just add that to the radio labelled um, cells in the tube.
now uh, they're going to draw up the activity that it needs. It's only about 200 megabecquerels that they need, so they're just going to draw up that volume into the syringe ready for the patient injection. they're just putting a cap on the end of the syringe so that they can be taken to the nuclear medicine department for injection. And finally it's sent to the nuclear medicine department for injection and scanning. <laughs>